We're going to explore Smith chart basics and then use that information to learn about the RF performance of a paperclip. Would this make a good antenna? At what frequencies does it resonate? A Smith chart makes this really easy to see. Let's start with a Smith chart or you could use an agent Smith chart. Real quick, if electrical engineering topics are up your alley, please consider subscribing to this channel. We'll do a giveaway when we hit 100,000 subscribers and we're super close. Smith charts look scary at first, but they're not once you know what's going on. Let's start with the complex impedance, say 0.5 plus J 1.1. Let's plot out this impedance on our complex plane. Our x-axis is our real component, or resistance, and the y-axis is our imaginary component, or inductance and capacitance. Inductors are positive, capacitors are negative, and you can plot it. We can see where our real component, 0.5, and our imaginary component, 1.1, meet, and we plot it. Simple Algebra 1 stuff. A Smith chart is basically this graph, but you curl it in on itself into a circle. This might seem weird because all of these axes go out to infinity. It'd be hard to plot infinity resistance on this, but with the Smith chart, we can. And an open circuit is infinite resistance. Infinity is not some weird edge case for electronics. Open circuits are everywhere. So to plot the same 0.5 plus J1.1 on the Smith chart, we do the same thing we did before. We find 0.5 on the real axis and 1.1 on the imaginary axis and draw a spot where they meet. It's algebra one, but it'll impress and confuse all the business majors. We have an open circuit, infinite impedance on the far right, and a short circuit or zero impedance on the far left, and literally everything in between along the axis. The Smith chart now gets more complicated for two reasons. Reason number one is that all this is normalized information. For example, the RF folks like 50 ohm systems. So if we had an impedance of 75 plus J40, we'd end up with a normalized impedance of 1.5 plus J.8, and we can plot it. In an ideal world, our generator and load are impedance matched, so we end up with 1 plus J0 right in the middle of the Smith chart. We get the best transmission, the transmission coefficient is 1, the reflection coefficient is 0, and our visoire is 1. The Smith chart tells us that. We can also use this information to design impedance matching networks to move from one point that's non-ideal to the ideal point in the center. This is easier with a combined Smith chart that has both impedance and admittance, but we're not going there today. The second reason this gets complicated is that impedance is dependent on frequency. So naturally, as our frequency changes, so does our impedance. So at one frequency, we have one nice point, but in RF engineering, we care about a whole range of frequencies, so we often end up with some sort of curve as our frequencies change. This is really nice, though, because we get a picture of our system as the frequency changes. Instead of more theory, let's look at what this paperclip looks like on a Smith chart using a VNA. What the VNA does is output a known frequency and power and sees what it gets back. We'll solder our paper clip to this SMA adapter, hook it up and see what happens. snap transition, but I didn't do the snap on the first time. So boom, we're back. So our VNA is all set up and we have our adapters as a reference plane. This is the exact setup sans paperclip. And you can see on the screen, both the Smith chart and the S11 parameters, our Smith chart shows that we're basically going between open and short circuits. And we have pretty much no loss on our log mag chart or our logarithmic magnitude chart. Now we're gonna swap in our paperclip antenna. You can see as the frequency sweeps from zero to 10 gigahertz, our impedance changes. There are a couple interesting points that stand out here on our S11 log mag plot. This is frequency versus power. These dips show us that the paperclip is either transmitting power at those frequencies or it's dissipating power as heat. Doesn't feel like heat. In this case, transmission is the large majority of what's happening. On the Smith chart, we can put markers at the same frequencies as we see the dips, and notice that these are the points closest to our home base in the middle of the Smith chart. If I get close to the clip without touching it, we can see that the characteristics change. This is why a theremin works. <laughs> Clipping the length should definitely change its performance. Ooh, not too bad. We could probably tune it. Everything shifted over. So that was a normal paper clip, but what about... Mega Clippy. <sighs> I love you, Mega Clippy. <laughs> Is this the outro scene? Or do I just leave it randomly in the middle of the video? Here's our super sketchy connection. Let's see how it does. 
pretty okay antenna performance at 400 megahertz, 2.2 gigahertz, 4.4 gigahertz, and a bunch of craziness around 16 to 18 gigahertz. So not only does a paperclip work as an antenna, a mega clippy works as a mega antenna. Hopefully this helps you wrap your head around what information a Smith chart gives you. There's a lot more that it can do, but for the sake of my sanity, we'll leave it at the paperclip.